Twilight Masquerade is just around the corner, so let's dive into another new card with significant potential in the meta, Ogre Pond EX. This legendary Pokemon is represented by four EX cards showcasing the various masks from the Scarlet and Violet games. With unique abilities and attacks, these masks bring versatility to your deck, and to keep on theme, you can even swap the masks out using the new item card, Ogre's Mask, allowing you to switch Ogre Pond EX from play with one in your discard pile. Similar to the Thornton's effect, but exclusive to Ogre Pond, so it's on an item card instead of a supporter. It lets you make unique plays for different matchups while also helping you get set up. The main Ogre Pond in the list is of course the Teal Mask, being the face of the Scarlet and Violet DLC of the same name. Its ability Teal Dance forms the core of your deck, enabling you to attach a Grass Energy to it from your hand once per turn while drawing a card at the same time. Having both energy acceleration and draw power on a basic Pokemon is pretty solid. With two Teal Masks in play, you can trigger both abilities, attach an energy to each one, attach one for turn to another one, and then uh, just energy switch to it and you have an attacker online. Ogre Pond's attack Myriad Leaf Shower poses a significant threat early in the game, especially to basic Pokemon that are attempting to evolve. With its type coverage and snowballing damage, it becomes even scarier against larger targets if left unchecked. Dealing a base damage of 30 and an additional 30 for every grass energy that's attached to it, you're doing a minimum of 120 damage and only going to go up from there. Its grass typing also makes it effective into dark types like Roaring Moon EX and Charizard EX, hitting them for weakness to take easy knockouts. Charging up grass energy onto the Teal Mask Ogre Pond allows us to cover the double colorless energy cost for the other form's attacks as well. By using Ogre's Mask, you can just swap it out into them, and then we just need an energy of the type that they need to attack. First one we're going to talk about is Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pond, because just get it from the discard pile and it's the true silver bullet into Charizard decks. This Ogre Pond's ability makes it immune to damage from other Pokemon that have abilities, so suddenly cards like Charizard, Lugia, and Chin Pao can't even scratch us. We aren't just a defensive wall though. To ensure that we attack them, the deck runs Luminous Energy to cover the fighting type attack cost, as well as a basic fighting energy so that you can search it out with an Earthern Vessel. The big benefit of the attack though is it's going to ignore any effect on your opponent's Pokemon, shredding right through them, taking out things like Mimikyu, and it's not going to be impacted by resistance, so you can still two-shot into something like Lugia. The trade-off being it isn't affected by weakness either, so you are going to have to two-shot things like Arceus and Iron Hands. The next Ogre Pond we have is the Wellspring Mask, which also has a solid attack that can be used for two Grass Energy and Illuminous Energy, or basic water for this one. It lets you hit the active for 100 damage while having the option to shuffle three energy from it into your deck to do 120 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, as long as they don't have a Manaphy in play. This can be helpful to set up damage into larger targets or take out two single prize Pokemon in one go. It also has the attack Sob that's just going to cost one colorless energy to use. It locks your opponent's active Pokemon in place, removing their ability to retreat. They can use switch cards to get around it though. This could come in clutch in the late game if you notice your opponent has been pretty aggressive drawing cards from their deck as a way to just lock out a non-attacking Pokemon and then watch them just slowly deck themselves out. It can also be helpful in the early game to buy yourself a bit of time if you're having a bit of a slow start. And the final Ogre Pond is the Hearth Flame Mask, which also has an attack costing just two colorless energy, and in this case, a fire energy. So it could quickly be charged up using the Teal Mask, swapping it out with Ogre Mask and a Luminous Energy. It's a bit more situational though, as it's gonna do 20 damage for each damage counter on it, meaning you'd effectively have to tank a hit before it being relevant. Its second attack is pretty solid though, doing 140 damage and another 140 damage if it's hitting a evolution Pokemon, so you can one-shot V-Stars, which is pretty solid, and with a maximum belt, take out stage 2 EXs. This one's going to require 3 fire energy though, which we don't have a way to charge up in the deck, so seems a bit more, uh, well, better suited for Charizard decks, if I'm being completely honest, just as a early game attacker, for them to take out V-Stars or opposing Charizard EXs. But since it's wearing a mask, let's see if there's someone better behind it for our build today. I knew it! It was Charizard all along! <laughs> Jinkies! Yeah, that's right, even this deck has a Charizard of its own. By using Luminous Energy on it, we get access to a solid attacking option for the late game that can do 250 damage without the need to set up an Ogre Pawn. And since it's only giving up one prize, it helps skew the prize trade in our favor and can potentially force opponents to play a seven prize game. The other way we can use to manipulate the prize trade though is by using Legacy Energy. Not only is it going to count as any type to help charge up our various Ogre Pawns or Charizard, but when it's attached to a Pokemon and they're knocked out, they're going to give up one less prize, effectively turning our Ogre Pawns into single prize attackers or Charizard into a zero prize attacker. It is only able to happen once per game though, so there's no point running something like Roseanne's to try and recover it, 
It would also help us get Luminous energies back, but since we have basic energy and super rod, if we're in a pinch we just do that to get our attacks back online. The rest of the list is pretty standard stuff though, we've got Squawkabilly as an early game draw option helping us set up Ogre Pond's turn 1 to start taking prizes, there's also Bibberol as a draw engine while helping protect us against Iono and Unfair Stamp, Energy Retrieval to get our Grass Energy back into hand to trigger our Ogre Pond's ability, and Bravery Charm for some added bulk on our basics. What are your thoughts on this build of Ogre Pond? Do you think it has what it takes to go head to head with the uh, top tier decks? Let me know in the comments down below. But I did say that we have two builds today, so don't go rushing off just yet. This second build is much more streamlined in its approach and focusing on the scaling damage of the Teal Mask rather than going for a toolbox approach. Our Pokemon count's a little bit different. Having only the Grass Ogre Pond, Radiant Greninja, and Squawk Ability for some draw power, that, that's it, we got six Pokemon. As we only have the Ogre Pond as our attacker, we're focusing on getting as many energy out as quickly as possible, so we've got 20 basic grass energy in here. It means that we're never going to miss an attachment for turn, or at least ideally we shouldn't, and we should be able to trigger multiple abilities every turn. We also have the new item Bug Catching Set that allows you to look at the top 7 cards of your deck and grab 2 grass Pokemon or energy that you find there, to help us quickly dig through the deck and get set up. Earthen Vessel is going to help you thin out even more energy from the deck, and multiple energy retrieval for recovery from our discard pile when we've used energy as a bit of fodder for Earthen Vessel or when an Ogre Pond gets knocked out. The other way to keep energy in play after a knockout is by having experience share on our benched Ogre Pond EX. So one gets knocked out and we're just going to pull that energy onto the ones on the bench and then they're ready to start attacking too. There's also Gardenia's Vigor for a bit more draw power and a way to accelerate another two grass energy onto a benched Ogre Pond, scaling up our damage even faster. Since this energy only goes to the bench though, we have Switch Cart to pivot out instead of having to manually retreat, which is going to cost us an energy if we do it. Though Ogre Pond's retreat cost only being one, it's not the biggest deal if we have to do it. There's also the Ace Spec Prime Catcher to help switch out a charged up one into the active while gusting up a key knockout for our opponent. A consideration for the list would also be running the Ace Spec as legacy energy to potentially force our opponent to knock out all four Ogre Ponds in a game. We've got Clap Stadium in here to uh, just Fill out our bench, get rid of Squawkabilly, and we have Penny to pick up the Greninja, so it's definitely a consideration. This list definitely feels a lot more focused in what it wants to do, drawing cards while ramping up energy to land solid hits. It does run the risk of being hit pretty hard by Iono in the late game though, so if you're unable to get into energy after you get hit with Iono to continue drawing cards and charging up, you could be in a bit of a bind. But by that point, you should have multiple attackers ready to go and it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I did forget to mention though, we also have Energy Switch in this build to help boost our damage off other Ogre Pond's abilities or get an attacker online so that we can take that early game knockout without needing to use Gardenia. What are your thoughts on this build though? Do you prefer it or the Toolbox one we covered earlier in the video? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and what deck we should cover next. If you found this video helpful in any way, hitting that thumbs up button's a great way to let me know and subscribing makes sure you won't miss out on the next video. Also, if you're wanting to get a uh, head start on the next format and test these decks out, there's going to be a link in the description of the video so that you can print off proxy cards of everything we've talked about today. And if you're unsure of the process to make proxy cards, the video popping up right now will take you through that. Or there's another one that YouTube thinks you'll like. Till next time though, stay golden, you Goomba.